take 34,500 volts from our power companies. We take two redundant feeds, we fed out to two sides, two sets of redundant switches. And one thing you'll notice is the level of power we draw from our power company here is much higher than most data center projects. We step down all of our um, all of our power here locally from medium voltage down to low voltage in the next room. Once it comes from that substation, it gets distributed out through the whole facility from these main distribution panels. And you can see these panels send power to all different parts of the facility. This breaker uh, powers a compressor and a chiller. This is a pump and a pump package. Another pump, another compressor and a chiller, and two UPS units. Now, the UPSs are where we clean the power, and this UPS unit behind me is a 900 kVA uh, Caterpillar rotary UPS unit. We don't do battery UPSs at Terramark as a rule. You know that from touring through our Miami facility. In Miami, we have one big diesel motor connected to one big flywheel connected to a generator. Here at the Napa the Capital Region, we separate those out so the generators are outside in a building. The flywheels are here in this cabinet, and we use multiple flywheels in Culpeper. This cabinet has three 660 pound flywheels spinning faster than the hard drive in your computer. They spin at 7,700 RPMs. They carry our load for about 40 seconds in the event of a power failure. We only need eight seconds to spin up a generator. So if we have a generator failure, we have a swing generator that can also spin up within eight seconds. So plenty of plenty of ride through capacity on these UPS. But almost a megawatt of UPS in there, and we have 110 of those on the campus. About 40 or 50. I should know that number. I wish the I wish the uh, PDUs were closed. I I'm very anal about things being neat. So what you see in the Napa the Capital Region is dual redundant chilled water loops, completely separate infrastructure in case there's any failure or interruption of service, we can still cool the floor. You also see these four pipes coming down and going under the floor. Those pipes are used for in-row cooler systems that we use to spot cool very dense customers when needed. So in this facility, you see a lot of ceiling height. We're very, very high power density here, so we have to move a lot of air to cool the uh, equipment that's consuming all that power. So from the floor to the ceiling, we've got the racks, very low lights so that you've got good uh, illumination inside the racks when you're working. Above, you've got the data layer hanging from the screen unistruct, and then all that space above is for hot air return to get channeled into the top of the crack units so that it can get turned into cool. What we have here are 500 ton chillers, a whole row of them. They consume an enormous amount of, of energy to make cold water, but on hot days, you don't have a choice. You have to use the compressors and these chillers to make cold water to uh, feed to the, the crack units down below us. Green engineering is very important to us, and the more energy we can save, the more cost competitive we can be to our customers. So what we do, is when the ambient temperature drops, we use these dry coolers behind us, we call them free coolers. They work just like the radiator in your car. They take cold air from the ambient space, they pass it through a radiator that has our chilled water flowing through it, and it makes cold water in almost a free fashion for us. We run the pump, we run the fan, that's about it. So by shutting down our chillers to save energy when we can, we save almost 30% of energy in the overall operation of the data center. We also store chilled water here in a thermal reserve that you can see down at the end of the roof. This building will, will hold 70,000 gallons of reserve water on the roof eventually. And we use that for thermal reserves. So if we need to do load curtailment, power company calls us and says, can you give us four megawatts? We can shed 
some load on the chillers, draw down on the thermal reserve for a little while, and still continue to cool the data center. Then at night, we can use the dry coolers when it's cool outside to replenish our thermal reserve. So by managing our energy this way, we operate the data center about 30% less than others in our space, and all that cost savings gets delivered on to the customer uh, in, in the form of cheaper service. And uh, yeah, the runtime was a very important thing for us because this is a very important disaster recovery site for not only federal government customers, but mission critical commercial clients as well. So what you see here uh, in this 520,000 gallons is essentially a, a fuel storage depot of you know magnitude of Dulles Airport type of thing, right? So when you have this much fuel, you can't just let it sit. Diesel fuel has uh, moisture in it, and if you let it sit, that moisture will, will separate out and mold will grow in there. And so we have to constantly, what we call, polish our fuel. We move it through our pipeline. We have a pipeline that runs around the whole campus. So we move the fuel through the pipeline constantly. We, um, we uh, separate out the water, we inject conditioners and all those kinds of things to make sure that when the generators need to fire up, they have pressurized, clean, ready to go fuel. Behind me is the generation building for Data Center A at Terramark's Napa, the Capital Region. Inside is 11 2.25 megawatt generators. These are, these are diesel generators the size of diesel locomotive engines, 11 of them in this building, two stories tall.